Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. If you're looking to take your sewing to the next level, you're in the right place. So this is episode six of Wigging Pants That Fit. Today we're going to look at the back of your pants and make adjustments um, based on the wrinkles and the things that you see on the back piece. So there are a lot of them today and I'm gonna get right to them. I will be cutting to another camera angle and using miniature pattern pieces to show oh. you. I do this to just kind of keep the paper uh, at a minimum, um, but do realize that the adjustments are not really gonna look proportional on these. Um, in other words, it might look like it shifts things a little more than it should. Um, things look like they might not true up because when you do that much on this little bit, it's going to make a bigger difference than when you do it on a large pattern. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, talk to you about the adjustment and then cut to the other camera and show you how to do it. All right, so by now we've been working on the fronts of our pants and there's a lot of problems that have crept up in the back. And in order to um, fix those, um, we need to understand what the wrinkles are telling us. And basically, they're very difficult to decipher sometimes in the back, especially because you see wrinkles under your bottom and there's about four different reasons for them. So I'm gonna try and go through them and sometimes it's trial and error. Sometimes an adjustment, you might think it's something and it doesn't really make that much difference. So you can either try more of that adjustment or you can try a different one, okay? So the first one uh, really bugs me because it happens to me in, it's happened to me in ready to wear my whole life. It also happens a lot of times with my patterns. And what that is, it is basically from prominent calves, but you know those diagonal wrinkles that you get in the back. Um, and they just, you feel like if you could just fold that up and take that away, that they would just lay better back there. Do you know what I'm talking about? That is from prominent calves. And it seems so weird that the adjustment is way up here for the calf, but that's how it is. So I'm gonna cut to the camera and show you how to fix that. And um, hopefully this will help you out a lot because I know this has made a huge difference for me. First one I wanna show you is um, for prominent calves. And it doesn't even seem like it should be from the way that we're adjusting it, but it's those diagonal folds that you get um, on the back of your legs. And I get them a lot and I never knew that it was from my calves. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Um, what you're first gonna do, so what you're first gonna do is you're gonna draw a diagonal line from the inseam to the outseam at a diagonal kind of the same diagonal as the folds are back there. Basically what you're gonna do is take out some of that fabric that's bunching up. So you're just gonna make a line here and you're going to leave this one hinged. So you're actually going to cut in this direction, All right? Leave this as a hinge. Somewhere from the crotch curve, you're gonna go ahead and make another cut this time this way and leave a hinge here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. Working in miniature again, so <laughs> hopefully this works out that you can see. Um, so I'm going to but not through, making a hinge there. And I can't See, if I, if I just took out the extra there, um, I would have all kinds of problems with this being crooked up here. So I have to make another cut from here to the crotch seam and make a hinge. So once you make those cuts, then what you're gonna do is you're going to fold it over so that you can take out some of the uh, wrinkle there. Uh, what 
has to happen though is this has to spread a little bit so that you can true that line up. Okay, so we'll put some paper back here. All right, and let that split and how much we're going to take out. All right, it doesn't have to split a whole lot right here. Now this looks like a whole lot of difference, but it actually in when it's not in miniature, it won't be that much. So we'll true that up. And then the other thing you want to do, you need to measure how much you overlapped it there. And I'm going to use this to kind of measure. Okay, so I've got this like a quarter of an inch. Obviously this is in miniature, so it's going to be way different. Um, but what you want to do is you want to add that on to the top. So you're going to add whatever you overlap so that it's the same as it was. You're going to add that quarter of an inch back to the top. Okay, and then you're just going to tape everything down really good. And then true everything up. Your curved ruler if you need to. This is pretty easy to do. And this. Right, like that. All right. So then you're just going to go ahead and cut that out, and this will be your new pattern piece. So, to make you understand it, basically, the first cut. This cut that you made is so that you can overlap it and take some of that excess back here. That's what causes those diagonal lines um, that people get back there. And so that's something you're going to have to do. Whoop. Yep. And you can't do that without doing this split here and hinging it so that you can bow it down and have this line be trued with the rest of it there. And then you have to add whatever you overlapped here, you have to add back onto the side seam because otherwise it won't match up to the front side seam. And that's basically how you do that. And then that takes out all that full, extra fullness back there between your basically your butt and your knee is kind of where I think it normally is. It's usually down here around the, um, the back of your knee, but I get it sometimes it's just like this. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of people that walk around with needing to do that. <laughs> the next one I want to show you, it isn't necessarily wrinkles, although it can be. It's usually done a lot of times in combination with the gaping waistband, uh, but it is the sway back adjustment. So in this next clip, I'm going to show you how to fix that without disturbing the waistline. Now, can you cheat and just take a little bit out here? Yes, you can. And I do that a lot. Um, if everything else fits okay, that's perfectly fine to do that. What I usually do if there's darts, though, is I'll sort of distribute it three ways. Uh, one for each dart and one part for the back seam. And then that sort of distributes it a little bit better than just taking the hunk out of the back. All right, so you can do that too to have fix this way back. It's not really the kosher way to do it, but sometimes if everything else fits okay, it's perfectly fine to do that. But here's the right way. <laughs> the next one I want to show you is for a sway back. And it's actually a really pretty easy fix. What you're going to do is just uh, cut a diagonal here up to the side seam and hinge it. So go to but not through. This is your hinge right here. All right, and then you're just going to overlap that some so that it brings the, the, the sway inward, which is what you want to do. See, you notice what happens here when you overlap that, it comes closer. And then once you do that, you have to redraw this curve. So again, you need a piece of paper back there. So 
So we're just going to slide some paper on there. And remember, when you redraw a curve, you go from known point to known point. And try to follow the same curves as much as possible. So we're going to draw that. And we're going to go right up along there. And there we have our new curve. And it is a sway back fix. Now sometimes when you have a sway back, let's see. Sometimes when you have a sway back, you also have a gaping waistband. So I'm going to show you how to curve the waistband as well. And that will be next. So this is for a sway back. The next one is for a gaping waistband, and we all know what those are like. And so it's like when you sit down and, you know, you have extra space for a tool back there. <laughs> it just gaps out, and no matter what you do, it won't go flat against your back. You need to curve your waistband more. So I'm going to cut to the camera and show you how to curve your waistband. Now, when you have a gaping waistband, you're just going to take your curved waistband and you're going to make just a couple different lines on here right at the curves maybe where the curves are the most prominent okay now you're going to cut these curves you don't want to disturb this because it's going to be attached to the top of the pants so you don't want to make any changes uh, necessarily to that all right but what you can do is cut down here and down here and leave a hinge here and a hinge here. So let's do that. And I'm trying to bring it closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. All right, this is a waistband. And remember, it's cut on a fold, so you'd be making this adjustment before you cut it out. All right, then you're just going to overlap it there. And you're just going to kind of see how much you need to do by measuring your, uh, your waist. I wouldn't start with a whole lot. Just, you know, do a little because you can always untape it and do a little more. And then just overlap the second one. And then you have uh, made a curved, a more curved waistband. Okay? That's how you fix a gaping waistband. The next one is for a flat seat. And those are wrinkles that basically sort of pull down from your hips and um, also horizontal. It just kind of, you just kind of have too much room back there for your bottom. So what you need to do is just take a little bit away. So I'm going to cut to the camera and show you how to do that one. All right. Now another one that has wrinkles under the bottom, but this time they're usually diagonal pointing up and out, okay? And that is when you have a flat seat. And that's very easy to fix as well. These are all, a lot of times, these ones on the back are super quick, easy things to do. All right, so with that, you just want to um, kind of take a little bit out of the crotch curve in the back. So you would just kind of mark a little bit. A little bit goes a long way here, okay? And you want to kind of bring that down all the way to the knee as you, as you can. So um, looking for a good curve here. Just bring that down. All the way. And that will fix your flat seat. Might this might be a little more um, than you would need. Again, it's exaggerated because it's in miniature. Um, it would not be taking that much away from your thighs. This is not proportional because um, if I took that much on these, it would be too tight in the thighs. So a lot of times the, um, the flat seat and the uh, thighs are real big. Um, so this kind of fixes both. All right. The next one is for a low seat. 
So these wrinkles are horizontal and they're just up under your cheeks, okay? They're not pointing down, they're not coming down this way, they're just kind of horizontal right there at your cheeks. And you just need to kind of scoop it out and I'll show you how to do that. This would be a low seat. Now a lot of times this is um, kind of a wedgie and just real tight wrinkles right under your butt, horizontal though, okay? So that just means you need a little more room because your bottom hangs low. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take a curve and you're just gonna scoop that out from there. Oh, sorry, not drawing very well today. <laughs> you're just gonna scoop that out, giving your bottom more room. So then you would, this would be your new pattern piece here. Just cut along the scoop. The first line I drew I think was maybe a little too much. And you want to come right back to the point at the inseam because you don't otherwise your inseams won't match up. Okay? So I've just scooped that out. This is for the low seat adjustment. The next one is when you have some butt wrinkles that are horizontal but then they sort of point up. And um, that is from having um, a torso that is larger this way than this way. And that causes those wrinkles. So what you need to do is add to um, the back piece. So I'm gonna cut to that camera and show you how to fix that. Okay, now these are some more butt wrinkles. Um, these are kind of horizontal and pointing down. And this is when you have a cylindrical torso. And um, basically, you need more room in the crotch. So sometimes you have to scoop and do this, um, but sometimes just doing this is enough. Um, all you're gonna do, and I do this routinely on my pants, just gonna add a little paper here. All right, all you're gonna do is you're gonna take and you're gonna add a little bit extra to that crotch curve in the back. See right there? Let me bring it closer. See right there, I just added a little extra. And then you're just gonna take your ruler and blend that in. So you're just giving your bottom a little more room. And it also releases in the thighs and helps it to hang straighter in the back. All right, I'll just cut that new line. And there's your new piece on that. So that was the cylindrical lower torso, it's, which it's called matching up what it's called in your duet book so that you can uh, know when you refer to it. A lot of these are in there, not every one, but a lot of them are. And then the last one is for a full seat. For this one, you kind of have wrinkles distributed all around and they're sort of radiating out from the middle of, the, of your bottom. Just too tight. So here is how to make more room for your bum. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you a full seat adjustment. And basically this is going to look the same that as a full tummy adjustment needs to look. Um, it's, it's just, uh, you have wrinkles going in all directions and um, you can just tell that it's very tight, okay? So what you're gonna do is it's pretty simple. You are just going to make a cut right across and then you're going to make this the hinge right here so you're going to cut across that line two but not through and then you're going to split that open giving room more room in your bottom, okay? So then you would take a piece of paper, you would spread that however much you need to. Again, you don't have to, this is exaggerated, okay? Because it's in miniature. 
it probably doesn't in, in reality need to be that much. You can kind of figure out how much you think it needs to be. Um, but this is a, you know, a great way to fix that when your jeans or something are tied in the back and this is uh, the back waistband is sort of too low when you sit down. This is another way to fix that. Okay, so then you're just going to true up this line again going from known point to known point, which is super easy in this case. All right, and then we'll go ahead and we'll cut along the line we just drew. And we have a new pattern piece that has a full bottom adjustment. All right, okay. so I hope those helped. I know uh, when it comes to adjustments, sometimes it's really hard to know which one to do, especially those wrinkles under your bottom. I think the best thing is to get a second opinion. I think taking a photo of it and sort of looking at it objectively yourself and seeing which way are those really pointing. Are they pointing anywhere at all? Because they're very, very subtle differences. So also you can get clues from the way the rest of the pants fit. For example, if they just feel loose in the back, then you know that those wrinkles are probably from a flat seat. If they feel super tight, then you might have a, you need a full seat adjustment. You know, so you just have to kind of be a detective and diagnose the problem. And sometimes you have to rule out one problem to rule in another. So uh, not an exact science, but it does help if you know how to read the wrinkles. Well, I hope that helped you, and I really, really have enjoyed this pants series. Next time, I'm going to show some of your muslins that I have permission to show and um, some of our finished pants. I think I'm going to combine that into one episode and show just kind of a slideshow progression of how uh, you all have done. So if you get your pants finished in the next few days, please go ahead and either email them to me or post them on the Facebook with a hashtag. Uh, pants or something so I can see them. All right, have a fantastic weekend. It's holiday weekend coming up. I'll probably be putting up a video on Friday as well, but just in case, have a happy 4th of July. Have a safe 4th of July. Enjoy your travels. I'm going on Thursday to Zinc's uh, Warehouse in uh, Ligonier, Indiana and I love going there. Last time I went, I bought 44 yards of fabric for $100, <laughs> so it was fantastic. Um, I did do a video on that. I'll put a card up here so you can see where I'm going. I may take some pictures of this. For sure, I'll, I'll, for sure I'll share my haul with you next week, but um, I'm very looking forward to it because on their Facebook page, they've shown some fabrics that they just got in that I'm real excited to go get. So have a fantastic weekend. I will see you soon. Happy sewing.